Hello everyone, today we're going to cover doing some system tests in Ruby on Rails. Now these have been covered before, but this time we're going to be using the Capybara gem and we're going to be doing this specifically out of WSL. Uh, if you're on Linux, there's probably going to be some steps you can skip, but the uh, WSL setup is required because we're using basically just a headless uh, Linux server and we need a way to run a browser. So if you're not familiar with what Capybara does, it'll basically just open up your website and let's say you have some unit tests on your website or some other tests you want to use, some system tests. Uh, and you want to make sure that like if you click the, the code button uh, that this thing pops up. It'll literally just open this page in a browser, go to the URL, and then you'll write like code that says uh, click on the button, click on like open with or download zip and then ensure that a file was downloaded. So this is like your, your full functionality for your app that you're testing when you run these. In our case, we're gonna be using this with Rails and we're gonna test it by creating some comments and I'll show you how to very quickly like create a test from scratch. But that does mean we're gonna to have to do some setup to like open up this browser. So the overall uh, process here is gonna be pretty simple. First thing we have to do is create a new Rails app. I'll say Rails new video. We're not gonna pass anything else in. We're just gonna go ahead and run this. Um, the solution we're using today is actually going to be from this Stack Overflow article, or Stack Overflow answer, which was about running the tests on Ubuntu 18. Uh, but thanks to this response right here, we actually have a way to get this up and running. We're going to go ahead and uh, we'll CD into our video, and I'll have a link to all of these resources I have up here uh, in, in the video description. Uh, we're going to go ahead and open up this project with a code dot and then we can come into our gem file and in our gem file we're going to have to add a couple things uh, this already has the web driver and the web drivers in the capybara so we already have these gems added that i was planning on adding here which is good uh, the next thing we want to do is just generate whatever we're going to test with. In our case, we're going to do a Rails G. We'll call it scaffold for the post. We'll give each post a title and a body of type text, just so we have something to test. Now, to actually run these tests, of course, we have access to the Rails test, but we can also do a colon, colon, to only do the system tests. We can go ahead and run that. It'll tell us we have a pending migration, which means we have to, you know, do our Rails db colon migrate command. That will migrate the database and now we can try to do a rails test for the system and when we run this we'll see that we get an error here that says hey this web driver's browser is not found in the chrome finder blah 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 blah. so we do have to go through here and set some of the stuff up now for the actual um the capybara and the selenium testing we do have to come into our uh it's going to be in our test and it's going to be this uh I think it's this one right here, this application system test case dot RB. And the updated answer here in the Selenium page is actually to, if I move this over, it is to add this line right here for the Windows host. So by adding this line at the top, what we can do is we can grab the, uh, we can grab the IP of our Windows host. We can then pass that in as our Chrome driver URL. We say HTTP colon slash slash and then the IP of the Windows host colon and then port 9515. After we do that, we can come inside here. We can comment out this driven by Selenium using Chrome and we can instead replace this with the Selenium remote. So just go ahead and paste in. This is again from that Stack Overflow response and we'll talk about this uh, a little bit here. So we do create our options, we add our argument to start it maximized, and then for the capybara, bleh, for the capybara, and then for the capybara selenium driver, we pass in the app, the browser of remote, and the URL equal to that Chrome driver URL. And this is where it differs a bit because in the original response, I think they used the desired capabilities and the options, and we kind of just skip over that. And instead what we do is we create this capybara config down here, below this do block, so this one right here, which just passes in the server host and the server port, and we're running this on localhost port 3000, so that works just fine. But then the last thing we wanna do is up top here, instead of saying driven by Selenium, we wanna say this is driven by Selenium underscore remote underscore Chrome. Okay, and now that we have that, we have to actually give this the capabilities to run through WSL. 
For this, we're gonna have another link in the video description. This takes us to the sites.google.com for the chromium.org drivers. This will give us the ability to run Chrome however we please. If we click on that link, uh, and it's just gonna be the one for the, uh, let me actually go back. It's gonna be the latest stable release is the one we're clicking on. In this case, I just like to grab the stable one so that things don't blow up. And then in here, we wanna grab the Win32 zip. You're gonna go ahead and download that. Once that's downloaded, you can then come over to your downloads directory, hopefully. If I open this up. And then in your downloads directory, you can then see that uh, we have the Chrome driver here. After you extract it, you can open that up. You'll have a Chrome driver.exe. And the suggestion is to get rid of the .exe and just to hit enter. It'll tell you you might break the file type. In our case, we don't really care if we break the file type. We then take this, copy it, and paste it somewhere where we'll remember. In my case, I put it in the bottom of my A drive. So I come in here and I just have the Chrome driver right here and all the other files that you're free to look at and judge me for. But once it's in the A drive, we now have access to it in WSL. So we can check in our WSL by doing like a LL and we can search in the slash MNT slash A in my case. If we run that, it gives us all those other folders, but right here is our Chrome driver, which means we can now do something like uh, dot slash MNT slash A slash Chrome driver. Oops, I, I don't know why I put the dot there. Dot uh, MNT slash a slash chrome driver there we go we try to run this we'll get an error right now but this at least shows us that this is working which is great and the reason why we're getting an error is because i already have one running in this other tab at this point we can now move on to the next step in the stack overflow answer which is to uh, try running this chrome driver but you want to run the chrome driver with the updated answer which is chrome driver space dash dash allowed dash ips and if we try to run this instead, and I'll do this in another tab. So you CD into your MNT slash A, and then you run your Chrome driver space dash dash allowed dash IPs. If we run this, uh, it will tell us that it can't for some reason, uh, because we have to run a dot slash, and that will go ahead and start it for us. So now this is running. What we can do now is try to run a Rails system or rails test colon system we exit out a full screen we can try to run this and we'll see what happens so you see it opens up a web page it runs through some posts in this case because we already generated these posts with our scaffold so these are the tests that it runs through we had four runs with four assertions and zero fails or errors in here we can see that we have one test two tests Oops, I actually ran that manually. Three tests and four tests. And that is one thing you can do. If you want to test creating a post, for example, and you have the right extensions installed, you can click run and it'll now try to run this and it'll work just fine. So that is uh, something to be aware of. I think this comes from the Rails testing extension, maybe. You might have to check for like testing or something. Uh, it's gonna be, uh, I don't remember which extension, but you should be able to find it online. But in our case, what we want to do now is uh, not just have this work for um, the, you know, the bare bones, what gets generated. Let's try to create a custom test and see what that workflow is, right? What that workflow is like. So what I'm going to do is run Rails S to refresh the server real quick so we can get started with this. We'll come over to localhost port 3000. We'll probably have to do a hard refresh because it's not working. There we go. And now what we'll do is we'll come into our routes and we'll do this real quick. So the first thing I'm going to do is set the root to be the post controller index action. And then what I actually want to do here is uh, generate a model for comments. So we'll create posts. We'll say this is like the test in case post. We'll create this. And then on here, I just want to have a quick form to enter a comment. We won't do any user stuff. This is just for the sake of showing you how to write these tests. So to create this comment, we're gonna do a Rails G model comment, give it a body, and we're gonna say a post colon references so that it can belong to a post. There we go. And you can see right here that it does try to create some tests for us. And then the next thing we can do is a Rails G controller for the comments. Go ahead and run that and now do a Rails S. And we can go ahead and come over to the root of our application. Inside of our routes, we want to do from this resources posts, and we want to do re resources for our comments. 
Go ahead and save that. Now up here in our models, in our app models, in our post.rb, we wanna say that this has many comments with a dependent colon colon destroy, just like that. And then in our comment, we wanna make sure this belongs to a post. Now in our comments controller, what we wanna do is just do our def create end, and then in here, hopefully GitHub Copilot will do this. It sets the at comment equal to the comment.new with a uh, at comment.save. But we do want this to also have a at post because of how I'm gonna be passing this in, which means we do have to grab the at post. And then from here, what we can do is we can say at comment.post equals at post, something like that. It's a bit backwards, but it's a quick way of getting this to work. And then after we have this at post, we want this to instead be at post.comments create for the common params. We no longer need to do this at post.save. And we're gonna to redirect to the at post. And it will say that we'll redirect to the post underscore path at post. And then we want this to have a notice. And this notice is gonna be that the comment was successfully created. So we can go ahead and run that. And now what we'll do is we'll try to create a test for this. So we'll come down here to our test directory, our system test, we'll right click new file, call this the comments underscore test.rb. And in here, we'll write the test itself. First thing we have to do is come into our post tests and grab this require application system test case. So we just put that right here. And then we can come back into our post test and we can find this uh, class declaration. It always makes it easier for me to just copy it from somewhere else. We'll just say this is a comments test. Now in this comments test, we're gonna set one test. This is gonna be to create a comment. Put this in a do block and an end block. And now in here, what we wanna do is start by visiting the post page. After we visit the post page, we then want to try filling in the comment form. We then want to submit the form and then we want to assert that the comment was created, something like this. So in order to do this, we're gonna have to follow a couple steps. The first thing we have to know is that Rails generates in our test fixtures and our post.yaml file, it generates two example posts for us. This is sort of like our, our fixture data, which allows us to access it by calling posts. And then inside of parentheses, we can like do colon one or colon two, or we can even do like testy boy or something and then give this a title and a body, and then we can do like post testy boy. So what's that look like? Well, we come in here and we say, visit the post path. And we want to visit the posts and then either one or two or even testy boy can be put in here and it'll grab that data that we put in this, in this post.yaml file. So we have this, let's come down here and let's try to fill in this form. The way we do this is we just say, hey, I want to fill in a form or, or like a, a field in a form that's called uh, body because that's what we called this this field for our comments we made it have body for content and we want to put the words this is a comment inside of it we then want to submit the form which we're going to have like a create comment button so we just say click on create comment and then we want to assert that the text appears on the screen, which is gonna be our alert. So right here, you see how it says post was successfully created. We want it to say something similar, but instead we want it to say comment was successfully created, which is that notice that we're uh, generating in our create action in our controller. Now, of course, if we try to run this, we're gonna have to make sure that we at least define this, otherwise we'll get a silly error. So I'm gonna create a private def comment params and, and then in here, we'll just do the comment require permit body. So now if we stop the server and we try to do, or try to run these tests, we can do a rails test colon system again. This will try to run all of these. The post ones will pass, but the uh, comment ones will fail. We do have to do a rails db colon migrate real quick, and then we can try to run these. So we'll see the post uh, stuff pass, and then we'll see the comment one hang for a little bit which it'll do right here. It's trying to find the form, but the form doesn't exist. And then it tells us, hey, the uh, we were unable to find the field body that is not disabled. So it's telling us the element wasn't found, which means we know there's an HTML element that's missing, which means that we have to go into our app, our views, our posts, and our post show page, for example, 
And in our post show page, we have to actually create this uh, thing that we're telling it exists. To do that, we'll just come under the render at post and we'll create a render for comment slash form. You pass in a post that is the at post and a comment that is a comment dot new. And then down here at the bottom, what we can do is uh, right below all of these buttons, maybe we just say at post dot comments dot each do comment. And then we just print out the comment dot body. This will show all of them. This will allow us to create them. Now we do have to actually create this form. So let's come into our views, our comments, right click new file underscore form dot HTML dot ERB. And then inside of this comment form, we want to do our usual uh, comment stuff that we've done so many times in the last couple of days. We create a form with a model and then we pass in an array. The first argument is the, or the first element is that post, that parent object. The second one is that comment because we have the resources in our routes that tell the post to do the nested resources for the comments. This will translate this into like the URL slash posts slash one slash comments slash four, for example, for the fourth comment on the first post. But once we have all of this, we can then just finish this up with a quick little check from GitHub Copilot. We say, are there any errors here? And then uh, we can probably end this one, I think, after the UL. And then we can come down here and we can create the form for the uh, body and then we can create the submit button. So we have this, let's actually change this a little bit to look like this because I think this is cleaner. We'll create a div and wrap both of these and we'll create another div with the actions. We can go ahead and save all of that. And now if we try to run our tests again, we can say rails test colon system. We'll try to run these. And this allows us to, you know, step through all of these processes and make sure things work from a test driven development rather than a panic driven development. We can see here we had five runs with five assertions and zero failures. So now if we try to start our server, I would, oops, I would reasonably expect this to work. If I refresh this page, I have a comment form. I say one, two, three, I create it. And the comment appears on the page. So we can see here, takes a couple minutes to get this up and running, but once it's up and running, it allows you to do your complete system test fairly easily. Uh, and if you're on WSL, you know, you have to do some extra setup. If you're on Linux, you could probably skip that entire Chrome driver part. Uh, but uh, of course we do have to have some sacrifices to be able to annoy everyone on Reddit who keeps telling us to use Linux uh, when we prefer to be able to play video games. And on that happy note, that's definitely not going to start a debate. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one and hopefully you enjoy the rest of your 2022.